And we are going on nearly two years of this, the pandemic, the isolation, the constant sensation of taking two steps forward and one step back. And for those Coloradans living in rural areas, help can be especially hard to come by. Clayton Sandell tonight with our partner Newsy on a gap in mental health care and the people working to close it. I felt that in any direction I looked, that people's lives would be better off without me. Lori Gill remembers the moment back in 1997 when she says she wanted to die. You know, I had a rope and, uh, and up drives my daughter up the driveway. And it was enough for me to just kind of deer in the headlights thing and go, oh my gosh. That was the turning point. That was the turning point. Until that moment, Gill had been afraid to ask for help. Her hometown of Marino, Colorado, two hours northeast of Denver, is a tiny farming hamlet with less than 300 people. And she was the high school history teacher. You know, I thought, geez, if somebody thinks that I've got some issues, are they even going to want me working with their kids? When it comes to mental and behavioral health, parts of Colorado share the same problem as many places in rural America. Not enough services to begin with, and when there are, resistance to using them. I was, as an adult, was embarrassed to go someplace in, in town because who knows, it was, I mean, everybody's kind of interconnected. In Colorado, mental health care facilities are mostly concentrated in bigger cities and harder to find for the roughly 720,000 people living in rural areas where the need is just as great. 22 Colorado counties don't have a single licensed psychologist. Alcohol and drug abuse is higher out here. Kids and young adults in rural towns are twice as likely to die by suicide. Last November, Gil's sister-in-law, Lori Schott, lost her 18-year-old daughter, Anna. She rodeoed. She was tough as they came for her size. As Anna struggled with mental health, her family struggled to get her help. But it was like waiting list after waiting list. And finally, we made the determination to um, reach out farther, and the geographic area just got us clear up to Boulder. So for us to get any help for Anna for mental health reasons in a timely manner, we had to travel two and a half hours one way, two and a half hours back, plus her counseling time. It was a hard thing to swallow in the capacity that rural America shouldn't be forgotten, that <laughs> it's a wonderful place to raise children, but resources on the professional side, on the professional side are not where they need to be. The state of Colorado is trying to fix that, hiring more addiction and behavioral health counselors for remote areas, including Native American and Latin communities. Public service announcements urge people to get help. I always thought my dad would teach my kids how to ride. I want people to know that it's okay to not be okay. Lori Gill's son, Gus, was just a year old when his mom attempted suicide. Today, he's working to reach farmers and ranchers. I'm the fifth generation on the farm, actually. He says the hard work of caring for the crops and cows sun up to sundown brings a special mix of financial and mental stress. Is it lonely growing up out here? You know, it certainly is for some folks. Gill is now working with the Colorado Farm Bureau. Just this year, they started offering vouchers that can be exchanged for counseling sessions. It's anonymous and free. There's this um, mentality that if that you need to be strong enough to handle your own problems and to get through those issues. And in reality, one of the strongest things folks can do is actually take that step to seek help if they need it. And in a state where half of all suicides involve a firearm, the search for solutions now leads to gun stores. So that's a 1301 tactical shotgun. Nathan no, Osbrock owns a small shop in Brush, Colorado. I can't guarantee if someone was suicidal, I'd pick up on it, but I think there's a pretty good chance I would. Osbrock agreed to be included on a map of places where anyone can voluntarily hand over a gun, potentially keeping it away from someone who may be suicidal. So I would just store it just like you see all these other handguns in boxes. So far, he says no one has taken him up on it. If someone was in a mental health crisis, I'm more than happy to, to take the firearms for as long as I need to. In Rocky Ford, Colorado, about an hour east of Pueblo. Rocky Ford Family Health Center, this is Melissa, can I help you? Doug Miller runs a medical clinic in a community where he says the need for behavioral health services keeps growing. We've been screening everybody for depression 
and anxiety. We also screen for loneliness. Thanks to a federal grant, Miller recently hired a professional counselor, but connecting face to face is still tough. So most days, I'm just commonplace when he wheels me in to an <laughs> exam room. Video chat is how Andrea LaRue sees patients. During the pandemic, Colorado lawmakers made telehealth visits much easier. I think it is a game changer for a lot of our patients that cannot otherwise get out. What would you like? Lori Gill says finally opening up is what helped her get treatment for depression and bipolar disorder. People can hide it so well. And you can miss it. These days, Gill and her sister-in-law are channeling sadness into fixing up the old Carnegie Library building in the town of Sterling. We bought it in April after we lost Hana. Upstairs, they'll have a country store. These were Anna's favorite books, so we had to have them. Downstairs, a coffee shop. Mentally for us, we had to find an escape. And I always say that this building you know, found us when we needed it most. Mm -hmm. um, I was looking for something that was, could be full of happiness and a place for people to go. And it's just a happy place. Yeah. A place helping them turn a page on grief and now write a brand new chapter. Clayton Sandell, Newsy, Sterling, Colorado. If you need help, we cannot recommend Colorado Crisis Services highly enough. Telephone number is 1-844-493-8255. You can also text TALK to 38255.